Today we're going to have our second photographer shootout. Please welcome Jens from Another Perspective. Hi Jens! Hey Wolfgang, thanks for having me today. It is really an honor to be on your channel again. Jens is the superhero of Iris photography and I'm pretty nervous to compete against him shooting exactly that. Images of the human iris. Anything else you want to say Jens? I'm really curious and I want to see what ideas you came up with. So let's get started. Great, let's start with the first problem. Reflections. The question is, is reflections actually a problem? What kind of image do you want to take? Maybe like this one? Then it's fine. You don't have to change anything. But when you're looking for the perfect clean image like this here, you need to be aware of some things. The first is go inside, turn off all other light source and use just one light source which should be placed at the side of the person you want to take the picture of. And then maybe you need to pull the eyelid to avoid reflections of the eyelash on your image. The most challenging part about eye and iris photography is probably to focus and to have enough feet of depth. When I started with iris photography and going down to the macro distance, the feet of depth was so small that it's almost impossible to get the whole iris into focus. The solution might be pretty simple. Just close the aperture and use f9 to f16 and it will be much easier. But then we have to fight with noise, so we need a lot of light. But at the same time, we don't want to damage the eye. So I'd recommend to start with your smartphone flash and come from the side. And because of the angle, you won't damage the eye and you won't have so much ISO issues. Are you looking for a flat image or an image where the eye got a lot of structure and details? To get the structure detail image, you just need to pull the light source a little bit behind the eye. Then a lot of shadows will appear on the structures on the eye and I think the image will look much more interesting. And here's a tip for a fun iris image. I call it the drug lookalike look. Therefore, the person you want to take the picture of needs to close one eye and also cover the eye with a hand. So the iris opens up completely and then remove the hand, open the eye and take directly image before the iris got time to close again. Now we need to talk about using a flash for eye and iris photography. Actually, the best images I've taken so far were with a flash. But yeah, that is kind of dangerous because you don't want to blend yourself or the other person. So I did some tests at the beginning with my eye and it is really very, very important that you never point with a flash directly into your eye. Always use a position from the side. Of course, you could use a large softbox so that the reflection is not so hard for your eye. But again, then you have those reflections and yeah, the image yeah, doesn't look so good. So I'd recommend to use an offset flash and also use some tape and tape the top of the flash. Then the power is not so strong and the light source is smaller. So it is much easier to avoid reflections of the light source and at the same time you'll be able to shoot at closed aperture and low ISO. Now the last question till I show you my final image for the challenge with Wolfgang. What kind of gear do I actually need for this kind of photography? When you want to take an eye image, it does not really matter. You can use your smartphone or your kit lens you don't need any specific macro lens. But when you want to go for a high detailed iris image, I'd recommend to use a lens which got at least a magnification of one to one or you might add some cheap extension tubes to higher the magnification. And I would also recommend to not use a full frame camera body because then the field of depth will be even smaller and it is harder for you to focus. And now I just have to choose my image for the challenge with Wolfgang which is not too easy. I really like the colors and the shape of the blue one, but the brown got a little bit more detail and structure. Both images were taken with a flash and I think I go with the brown one. Now that was pretty cool and puts quite some pressure on me. Here is my try. I used the Canon T7i for my images because it has a flip screen and I can see where the camera focuses on when I create an iris selfie. First I used the green screen lighting that I use for my YouTube videos to experiment a bit. 
As expected, due to the round reflective surface of the eye, you get a lot of reflections in the iris. You might be able to retouch them, but that's not what we want. Another point is you want to get some good contrast in the eye and not a flat iris image. See the iris as kind of a landscape that you photograph from above. The lower the sun is on the landscape image, the longer the shadows will be, and longer shadows create some interest. And that's exactly what we will do with the eye. Create a low sun with, for example, a flashlight by lighting the iris from the side. I will use my bike light for that. Experiment a bit with the position to get the reflection of the light just outside the iris. One tip, lean your head against something solid so that you don't move a lot. That will help with keeping the iris in focus. When you found a good position, take a few shots. Oh, regarding the settings, I would use manual exposure. Shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. A bit risky in regard to motion blur, but hey, you can take hundreds of images, so you should get the one or the other sharp image. For this first series, I'll use the lowest F number my lens supports. That will give me a shallow focus, but I want to keep the ISO rather low to get enough detail without noise. And finally adjust the ISO to get a decent image brightness. Okay, for my taste, the light is a bit too harsh and also creates some lens flare in this area. That almost looks like contact lenses. Yes, the eye also has a lens, hence the lens flare. How can we improve that? Since photography is all about light, I thought about how I'd best modify the light source in a way that everyone out there can reproduce my results without fancy equipment. Here is my solution. I call it the Iris Photography Tool. You can download a template with a link I provide below and easily create your own. It comes with step-by-step -step instructions, but here is a quick run through for you to help. Print out the template, then cut away this part, the inner rectangle here, and throw it away. Next, get a black piece of paper, a thick cardboard works well, and transfer the template to that cardboard. You can choose the length of the black paper to your needs. A longer one will be better if you don't have a macro lens. Cut away the same area as before. First this one, then the rectangle, and throw both away. Now we will cut out this white rectangle, place it over the cutout area on the black cardboard, and fix it with adhesive tape. Then form the cardboard to a roll and fix it with adhesive tape again. By the way, it is easier to attach the adhesive tape if you place a bottle, a glass or something similar within that roll. Next I'll take my template again and cut away the red dotted lines. Transfer it to another piece of black cardboard and cut it out. Create another roll that needs to have a slightly bigger diameter than the first and put the second roll over the first. How in the world could that help us? We now have a tool that will block all the light except the one coming through this small softbox. That will soften the light. But even better than that, we can change the width of our small mini softbox to create a so-called strip softbox. That not only will create more contrast, but also let us adjust the reflection of that softbox in the iris. The light is now much softer and the iris is more evenly lit. However, I lose quite a bit of light because of the diffusion. What I could do now is add a speed light to the bike lamp. That will give me more light to reduce the ISO and raise the F number for a sharper image and a bigger depth of focus. The flash will also freeze the motion in case I move during the shots. I still have to keep the flashlight in place because you will need it to help the camera focus. Otherwise, it would be pitch dark within our iris photography tool. Cool, no? You see, photography is all about creative thinking. And here is my final result. I hope you enjoyed this shootout. Let us know in the comments which image you like best. Wolfgang, now that I've seen your video, I must say that your iris tool is amazing, but totally over-engineered. 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing the challenge with you. And what about you? If you want to see more videos of the both of us, leave a comment below. I'm out. Have a good day.